My name is Captain Ashley Kessler. I'm on the teaching staff at San Jacinto College at the Maritime Technology and Training Center campus here in Houston, Texas. This is part four of my radar plotting series. In this video, we're going to talk about the contacts that are dead in the water, then contacts that are on the same course and speed, and then contacts that don't look like traditional triangles that we would think of but rather straight line triangles. So the objectives for this presentation, at the end of this presentation, you will be able to one, identify a contact that's dead in the water, then how to maneuver with a course change. Two, you'll be able to identify a contact that's on the same course and speed as the own ship and how to maneuver with a course change. Then three, we're going to identify other types of triangles, ones that are not what we consider traditional triangles, like right angle triangles or equilateral triangles or isosceles triangles, but these are going to be triangles that are going to be in the straight line. So contacts are dead in the water. We're going to identify a contact that's dead in the water. Then we're going to alter course to 045 degrees when that contact is seven miles away. What would our new CPA and bearing a CPA be? So I will show area in front of me. Or I want to maneuver against this contact. Or maybe my voyage plan says I have to alter course. But this E to R is my true course and my true speed or my own ship's true motion. When you plot your M06 and it lands in the same place E is, it's going to be dead in the water. Since E is zero knots, E never moves. If M is on something it doesn't move, it has to be dead in the water. This could be a buoy. This could be a day board. This could be an anchored vessel. This could be an oil rig. But they're all going to be dead in the water. So these contacts are still going to have relative motion. If you put on your relative radar trails on, these contacts are still going to track down this radar like they're a moving target. From this relative motion line, you can still find all the six solutions that we need to find from a radar triangle, we can find direction of relative motion, speed of relative motion, closest point of approach and bearing a CPA, time to closest point of approach. Of course, the contact's true course and speed is it's dead in the water. Our MX, our execution point, seven nautical miles away from us. So we're going to alter course to starboard and see if we can clear this buoy in front of us by, by required CPA. So we want to alter course from due north to 045 degrees. We want to parallel this 045 degree course change to E. Like in other videos, we're going to get our compass. We're going to stab E and swing R00 to starboard. And that's going to give us our R prime. We change course from due north to 045 degrees. If I change course on a relative motion radar, I change relative motion. The old relative motion was R00 to M06. The new relative motion is R prime to M06. Then I transfer that down to MX. And if I have required CP of two miles, this will not work because now we're going to miss him by approximately one mile, which I will probably get a CPA violation because of that. For me to open this up, I would have to make a bigger course change, maybe all the way to 060 or even higher than that. Vessels on the same course and speed as own ship. We're going to look how to identify contacts on the same course and speed as our own ship. Then we're going to alter course to 020 degrees and determine a new CPA and bearing of CPA. So 
So here's my E to R. This is my own ship's true course and true speed or my true motion. I could have put that anywhere on this plotting sheet. When we plot our M06, we get a range and bearing of our M06 and it's exactly the same as our R00, then R00 and M06 is going to land on top of one another. So E to R is our true course and speed. E to M is the contact's true course and speed. So this contact has to be on the same course and speed as our own ship. A way you can identify that, if you have relative radar trails turned on your contacts, this vessel will not have a radar trail because there's no relative motion. Another way to identify it is if you look at that contact on your radar and it's remaining in stationary in the same place for several minutes, it has to be on the same course and speed as own ship. Well, let's alter course to starboard against this contact. We can do it at any time. We can do it in five minutes or two days from now as long as we stay on the same course and speed. So there's no real MX or execution time or place for this course change. We want to alter course to 0 to 0 degrees. We're going to parallel or transfer that to E. We're going to get our compass. We're going to stab E and swing R00 to starboard. And now we have an R prime. Before we did not have relative motion. Since we changed course on the relative motion radar, we changed relative motion. Now we have relative motion from R prime to M06. And we can get a new CPA. and bearing a CPA. If we made that 0 to 0 degree course change, we would miss them by a little over four miles with a new CPA bearing about 0 0.13 degrees. Triangles that do not look like triangles. I call them straight line triangles. So we're going to identify and explain triangles that are in a straight line. I have four contacts here. I'm going to start with contact Charlie first, even though it's not a triangle, but it represents a very important concept that we need to understand when we do radar plotting. This R00 and the M06 is in a straight line. So basically under rule seven of the navigation rules, this is gonna invoke risk of collision since we have a constant bearing and a decreasing range, or at least maybe a close quarter situation may develop because of it. So you have to be very careful with contacts that have a constant bearing and a decreasing range. Let's look at contact A. I could have done many combinations of this triangle, but this is just to show you that contacts can be, I mean, the radar triangles can be in a straight line. So in contact alpha, our own ship, E to R, we're heading due north. Relative motion is heading south. And the contact, the E to M, is heading south. as a very fast relative motion. Contact Bravo, our own ship, our E to R, is heading north. The relative motion line is heading south. And the contact is heading northbound. The E to M is heading northbound. Contact Delta, our own ship is heading north. E to R is going to be our true course and speed. The relative motion is heading northbound and the contact's true speed is heading northbound, the E to M. So you could have any combination of these things, right? But as long as they all can still be on a straight line, but what's important to know, you will always have all three labels. You will have your E, you will have your R00, and you will have an M06.
review our objectives in this presentation, you were able to one, learn how to identify a contact that's dead in the water and how to maneuver with a course change against it. Two, how to identify a contact that's on the same course and speed as own ship and how to maneuver with a course change. And third, how to identify contacts, I mean triangles that do not look like triangles or basically straight line triangles. If you have any comments or questions about this video, you're welcome to email me at my campus email at ashley.kessler at sjcd.edu.